today I am watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer season 4 episode 4. Episode 3 we saw our first setup for an angel crossover with Oz and his band going to LA so that was great to see. Spike was back looking for this gem of Amara and we also saw Buffy and Parker decided to sleep together. Parker obviously wanted something different than what Buffy was looking for. So yeah, it's very interesting to see her now in this like college atmosphere as opposed to high school, which we had for the first three seasons. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm very curious to see what this episode will be about. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Yeah, I'm very curious to see more about this like taser vampire. Oh, a Halloween episode? Yeah, they're carving pumpkins. Then someone comes along, cuts you open and rips your guts out. Yep, puts it in a bowl for festive purposes. Vines tingled and your gooses bumped by the terrifying Fantasia. Fantasia's a great movie, not terrifying. Tutus just don't unnerve me the way they used to. Phantasm. It was supposed to be Phantasm. Oh, okay, I've, I've, I've seen Phantasm and that would be a very different branch of terror. Okay, but only because I lied about having better things to do. Last one we had my off. Yeah, I feel like Buffy is still feeling down after everything with Parker. Parker depression. Bailing on the buff. Does anyone else want to smack that guy? Make that four. <laughs> oh, I feel like he was wearing a mask or something and she just gave him the chops. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't jump out. What's wrong with you, lady? Well, you jumped out in front of her and scared her, first of all. And also, she's a vampire slayer, so. Oh, nothing's wrong with you, Buffy. That's the next level. Transmutation. Conjuring. Bringing forth something from nothing. Oh, pretty close to the primal force. I'm so proud of Willow, learning all these new skills. Backstabby. I'm with you on the reference, but I won't lie about the fact that I worry. It definitely can be dangerous, for sure. Power you can't control. Yes, speaking from a werewolf. Oh no, I kind of like them worrying anyway. <laughs> They're so cute together. I'm so glad they stayed together. Oh, look who it is. Giles, but I'm sure he's gonna think I should be on active Slayer duty. He doesn't care about Halloween. Yeah, isn't Halloween like the one night that it's actually less activity? Oh. Why is he wearing a sombrero? Seemed festive. Uh, come in. Candy? Is Giles a full candy bar type of house? Any decorated? And charms. Uh, uh, until now. Look, look. It's alive! Great reference, Giles. I'm distracted by all the tassels on his hat, though. Yeah, we've had a few Halloween episodes, so I'm excited. Hopefully their costumes don't take them over again, although that was a really cool idea, but. Uh, I come bearing spite. I know this actor. I feel like, I want to say he was on Breaker High. It's about getting laid. Is there any holiday that's not about getting laid? Arbor Day. That is about trees. So I'm glad, you know, you don't use that as an excuse to try and seduce women. Check this out. <laughs> I feel like they don't know what they're dabbling in and it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be real bad. Those people. I mean, you continue to associate with them though you share little in common. What are you talking about? He's like, they're my only friends. They go to college, you don't. They no longer live at home. You do. These seem like minor things. Are we dating? Everybody loves that question. You'll need a costume. A costume? A dress up, you know, something scary. I feel like she's gonna take that literal. I feel like it's gonna be a mean girl situation. Ex demon terrorize mankind for centuries. I'm sure you'll come up with something. It's not gonna be like sexy scary. It's gonna be like haunt your dreams forever, demonic nightmare fuel. I count four limbs, a head, no visible scarring, so I assume only on the inside. Life threatening accident of any kind, and I'm therefore uninterested. Wow, that's very harsh. Harsh, harsh, harsh. Class, and you're out. Yikes. Not really a sympathetic type, is she? Who makes things really hard on themselves? Halloween isn't a night for responsibility. It's when the ghosts and goblins come. Ha <laughs> She's like, I'm well aware of those. No, I mean it. You're welcome. Yeah, it would suck to see 
Parker ruined Buffy's entire college career and, you know, she starts getting kicked out of classes and stuff, but I get it. It's tough for sure. Well, that's an interesting little design. What does it mean? No clue. Yeah, you don't know what it is and you're just messing with it and you're gonna make things worse. You guys know how to spoil your guests. Is there alcohol on them? Blindfold chicks haven't put their hands in the bowl and tell them it's eyeballs. What is he, five? They love that? Wasting time buying them flowers and complimenting them on their shoes. So you go- The old grapes eyeballs trick. Short. Ah. Us? Cut myself. He's gonna spill blood on the thing. Ow, oh, Oz, no. Now you've like activated this circle of doom. Cheese and rice. Oh, if that spider comes to life! I do not like spiders. Last minute. Oh, I'm just glad I could find it. There. Try it now. I let that yeah, Mama Buffy. Loosened it a little around the... Oh, it feels better. I feel like we've had like a Red Riding Hood reference in the show before. Actually, the candy was for me. Your father loved spending time with you. Where is her dad? We haven't seen much of him. Not that he's usually around. It's taken time and a lot of effort, but I've got a nice circle of friends now. Oh, that's uh, so good. Especially with Buffy being away at college. It certainly didn't help that my last boyfriend turned out to be a homicidal robot. Yeah, Ted was not the best example, you know, of a healthy relationship for Joyce. I haven't seen her. We have to make sure she has fun. We have to force fun upon her. Willow going as Joan of Arc, I'm guessing. Is that Pippi Longstocking? Oh, they actually are! Oh my god! Yeah, because the circle turns everything real. Bond. James Bond. Insurance, you know, in case we get turned into our costumes again. I'm... Always good. Yeah, he's thinking ahead. And plus she have a close relationship with God. And you are? Ha, ha, ha. I was like, Oz is not dressing up. gonna be tricky now because it's halloween so are these taser guys costumes. yeah costumes or are they part of this taser vampire conspiracy but she's having some trouble finding a scary costume so she's just gonna meet us there Perfect. i feel like it'll be hard to miss <laughs> yeah because everything's coming to life oh my gosh <laughs> nightmare nightmare fuel they're gonna walk in think it's a normal party Just like break his neck and die oh my gosh i just had like flashbacks to the backstreet boys music video also <laughs> terrifying oh my god is that real is that a real person like really traumatic it is it is isn't it use patent leather i asked the guy to break no 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 wait i i it's something else i hear amy is it amy the rat Oh my god, it's bats, not rats! Cheese and rice! Oz, don't, it might be- Rubber. Oh. It's made of rubber. Then why were they just coming to life? Or it might be something else. A Easter bunny? I was honestly expecting, like, head to toe blood, gore, guts, the most horrifying thing she could think of. Where's the door? There's no door? What's happening? Um, why did the house just close her in? What? Did the house become haunted now? Get out of here. And you were so anxious for me to come. I'm serious, Buffy. We don't know what we're dealing with. Okay. Yeah, the house is like responding to them. So weird. It, uh... What is it? <laughs> it's alive. It's alive! Like Joe said, the Frankenstein, it's alive! So all like the inanimate objects are alive now, like the house and all these decorations. Oh, it's a real skeleton. Oh God, that's terrifying. The eyeball. <laughs> He's in shock. Chaz, what happened here? Ah! Oh my God, bonked him. See you later. Oh, well. And then, it, yeah, it falls as plastic? We need help. We need the only person that can make sense of what's happening. 
it, child, sitting at home eating his own candy. I have to worry about each of your safety. It's not your decision. Gotta disagree with you there. Oh, of course you do. Why are these two fighting now? Conjuring. Well, let's be realistic here, okay? Your basic spells are usually only about 50-50. Man, they are going for the triggers right now. Yes, good. I like that one, yeah. She's, like, saying that her, you know, witchcraft skills aren't as strong and... Uh, yeah, things are coming out. Something's happening. What I'm saying is, is I'm right with you, right by your side. Yeah, why is everybody being so honest? Oh, she can't see him? Buffy, knock it off. This gets over. I'm right here. This is so typical of him. What? What? That's insane. I'm really enjoying this episode so far. I think it might be one of my favorites of the new, uh, of season four. You guys are thinking clearly. He's transforming right now? What? They've somehow created a full moon? Oh no. Not good. Changing. We haven't seen Oz change in a while. Oh my gosh. I can do the guiding spell. I know I can make it work. Well, please. No! No! Oh! Oh no, he scratched her! Oh no! Great. Now I just gotta live with the fact that no one else can see me. No. Ah! Ah! Well, all the eyeballs McBleedy over here. Cheese and rice. I knew he was gonna come to life at some point. Oh my god. I don't think she fell outside. Where did she fall? This is crazy that the house is just like constantly altering and they're all experiencing different things it seems like and they're very much like being separated and it feels like it's on purpose. Your heart to someone and... Yeah, that's exactly what she was saying earlier. Oh girl, you're not alone. Ah! Oh god, it is a tombstone, oh! Nightmare, nightmare fuel for sure. They just draw a door like in Beetlejuice, will that work? Create a door, you can do that. I can. Yes, the chainsaw, yes! This historical building just cutting right in. Oh, bonked him. Us? Get off! He was like last in the bathtub. Yeah, and he's not there anymore. Obviously, Willow doesn't have those green lights around her. Okay. Yeah, nobody else can see them. What's going on? I saw them painting that. They didn't know what it means. So that's a bad idea. Uh, yes. Uh, somehow the the beginning of the the spell must have been triggered. Um, it ours is blood. Itself to to come into being. How? It, it feeds on fear. Oh. We need to stop. If we close our eyes and say it's a dream, it'll stab us to death. Just like in Nightmare on Elm Street, except when Freddy gets you. We get everyone out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of reminding me of like the Nightmare episode where everybody had to face their worst fears. And if this, ah, yeah, it's Giles. Buffy. This is Gagnon. I don't want to fight that. That looks like nightmare fuel. Pure nightmare fuel. The mark of well, that'll do it. Just punched a hole right through it. Is not one of them. <laughs> oh, he's like, you should have let me finish. Why didn't you let me finish my sentence? Oh, Giles and your pauses. Well, that had the exact opposite effect. Oh, no. This is not gonna go well. This looks like something straight out of Hellraiser. But he's like uh, three feet tall, or not even three feet, that was bad. He's like three inches tall. I am the Dark Lord. <laughs> is this place built for ants? Fear me. <laughs> He's so cute. Boop. Just give him a flick. I Taunt bring the terror. The Why can he hurt me? No, it's just tacky. <laughs> like, don't taunt him. That's rude. They're all going to abandon you, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, crunch. See you later, Gaknar. And he's frightened me. Oh, bloody hell, the inscription. She went for what she's afraid of? Under the illustration of Gaknar. What's it say? Actual size. Gotta look at the dimensions when you buy things. Oh my. So that was my first time watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer season four, episode four. It was a Halloween episode. I was very excited about that. The past Halloween episodes I've seen have always been really good. And I feel like this lived up to that. It was probably my favorite episode of the season so far. We got to see some characters that had been mentioned earlier were brought back. Joyce, Buffy's mom was back. Miss Walsh, Riley was back. We unfortunately saw Parker briefly. So it was great to see them brought back I was wondering when they would make a reappearance even if it was just for a brief scene it's definitely nice to see those characters brought back and still you know playing a part in the show Buffy was definitely feeling some of the fallout of her and Parker breakup whatever you want to call it them not hanging out anymore and felt like she was just kind of in the spiral of like why even try anymore what's the point she had kind of given up she's like I'm not even looking for anybody anymore like every time I'm with somebody it ends the same way and I feel like was just kind of stuck in that loop in her head and was wasn't really feeling too optimistic about future relationships whether that be in a year six whatever that is it was hard to watch just because Buffy is such a strong character and just to watch her whole demeanor shift because of Parker and I get that you know obviously she had other hopes for this relationship and thought it was a start of something and then that turned out to be not true and that was very hard for her and she's missing school and class and Riley is a little bit more gentle than Miss Walsh and Miss Walsh is like oh you're not missing a limb so why weren't you in my class she's like I don't really care about your personal problems which I feel like is a very harsh approach but that's her method and Riley is a little bit more you know sympathetic and is like hey like why are you working on Halloween and he's already like you're too hard on yourself that's interesting that he's kind of picked up on that character trait and she's like I'll stay in tonight like I'll finish this assignment that I missed and even the fact that just going to class and sitting in the same room as Parker is too much for her. I am glad Buffy decided to get dressed up and go up with her friends. Obviously it led to some very horrifying encounters but I'm glad she actually you know tried and went out and didn't just spend the entire evening alone in her dorm doing homework and again it reminded me of the nightmares episode where everybody is kind of faced with their worst fear and that's what I feel like this was playing into as well as this demon fed off people's fears and that explains why everybody was experiencing something different and the house was reacting and responding to their you know situations which I thought was super interesting and I thought okay maybe it's a haunted house but you know we see it physically change like when Anya's outside and the window gets completely covered up and there's no door and maybe her fear other than bunnies we learned that um, is to be excluded from things and she couldn't like have access to the house we saw Willow's spell backfire so maybe her fear is that she's losing control of her magic Oz we saw start to transform even though it's not a full moon and I think one of his worst fears is hurting Willow inadvertently and we saw her scratch her hand and the fact that he's you know he was talking about the wolf within and how every time he transforms he taps into some part some deep dark part of him that's really really dark and that part exists you know so like what does that say and how Xander became basically invisible he could still see himself in the mirror one second he was standing right next to Buffy the next he's completely gone you can't see him you can't talk to him nothing like that and we definitely heard him when he was talking to himself like oh I'm not in college like all of those insecurities were definitely just brought to the forefront and I think episodes like this are so interesting because we get to see that untapped look into our characters and what their worst fears are we can you know make assumptions based on their actions but this kind of gave us like a bird's eye view into their thoughts and actually gave us access into what they're thinking and hear it said out loud and even we have Buffy and Willow start fighting and saying things that they're definitely thinking but they don't usually say to each other we hear Willow say like Buffy I'm not your sidekick and Buffy brings out concerns about her magic and kind of doubts Willow's abilities to complete these spells like well why should we trust you you know you only your magic only works 50% of the time and it was interesting to see Buffy dress up as Little Red Riding Hood. I feel like there was an episode previously where they were alluding to her being Red Riding Hood. I don't know if she actually dressed up. Maybe she just had the red cape. I don't think it was for Halloween or anything like that. But yeah, it was interesting to see that again. And I love when they reference other episodes and there was tons of that in this episode as well with Willow being Joan of Arc and talking about, you know, obviously practicing witchcraft and almost being burned at the stake, which we saw in a previous episode. And Xander mentioning the episode, the Halloween one where their costumes took over. He's like, 
like, that's why I dressed up as James Bond. You know, at least I'll have these spy abilities if my costume takes over. And we saw Buffy's worst fear when she's trapped in this basement alone. And she's got this guy in the corner basically spewing all the things that she's been saying to herself this entire episode where she's like, why even try? Just give up. Like all those negative thoughts on repeat and just hearing them over and over while she's trying to battle, you know, this thing from the grave, whether it was zombies or whatever it was coming after her. I don't think there was any vampires in this unless somebody was dressed up for it as Halloween. Yeah, that was interesting just to see her struggle and then how the house brought them all together. Such an interesting concept of how this creature could alter reality when we see that skeleton, you know, attack Buffy and then she pushes it away and we see, you know, the plastic version fall. But, you know, to her mind and to the audience's view, it was very real and attacking her. And, you know, we see the spider come to life. The fact that all these inanimate objects were coming to life and now, you know, bringing about your worst fears, basically. So really cool concept. I really enjoyed this episode. And we have Giles is even dressed up and getting more involved. He's like, I'm not a watcher now. You know, I have time for these things. And I love the Frankenstein reference of when it goes, it's alive. And of course, that plays in perfectly to the episode when everything comes to life and starts, you know, attacking them. We finally got to see Giles with the chainsaw. I had seen it in the opening credits and I was like, where is this going to come into play? I'm glad I didn't have to watch, you know, 21 episodes to finally get to that scene. They brought it up pretty early in the season. So really cool. And of course, Giles is there to save the day and just starts cutting doors into walls because the house is trying to trap them. I don't know what would have happened, like if they would have just been trapped in there forever, what that would have looked like. But uh, yeah, it was definitely interesting to see Anya and Giles work together. And Anya's obviously very focused on just saving Xander, nobody else. And I love that they made this, you know, terrifying creature, like three inches tall, basically. And he's got this like really squeaky voice and he looked like something out of Hellraiser. And of course, Buffy, you know, inadvertently doesn't realize what breaking the circle will do. And then you just, you know, they built it up so intense, like it's going to be this huge battle. And then of course, you know, this little guy stands up and everybody's like, okay, like we can handle this. This isn't as scary as we thought, even though he had very strong powers, he was this tiny, tiny little thing. And Buffy just steps on him basically and that's the end of it and obviously Giles you know seeing in the book the diagram and is like this is actual size so definitely some comedic elements involved as well which was great sure it was a quick way to end the episode but uh, that doesn't bother me I still really enjoyed it and thought it was funny moral of the story is don't draw circles from spell books on your floor if you don't know what they mean like as soon as they did that I was like this is it this is gonna be something horrible and then even having Oz you know spill his blood on it I'm assuming that's what actually brought it to life and made it more than just you know drawing on the floorboards so yeah I was like this is it and I thought maybe it would just specifically target Oz I thought maybe that was the direction as his blood had been the one and Maybe it needed werewolf blood or something like that. I'm very curious to see if when I watch Angel now, if there will be an Angel Halloween episode. It's the first season of Angel, so it would be the first one. But if they're kind of existing in the same time frame, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I think that would be interesting what Angel's Halloween would look like without Buffy and what he would get up to. I don't think he would be going out to a party and celebrating. We did see the group of people who had been going around like tasering vampires, but it was Halloween, so when Buffy runs into them she obviously has no context and I think Oz is the only one that's seen them before and been suspicious but I don't know if he even you know thought oh it's more than Halloween my prediction for this season is that those people with the tasers will be our like season-long rivals but they've just been kind of sprinkling it out throughout episodes they haven't been in every episode even so yeah I'm very curious to see what that storyline is gonna lead to overall I really enjoyed it it was great to see another Halloween episode probably my favorite episode of the season so far and really cool to learn more about the characters and their fears and all those little insecurities that have been building kind of so far and have them actually you know brought to the surface and definitely playing into some previous episodes as well which was fun and I like that they went for something a little bit more abstract with having the you know the individual fears become the reality and not just like a haunted house or something like that so um, just a really cool story but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content.
Why is he wearing a sombrero? It's not gonna be like sexy scary. It's gonna be like haunt your dreams forever, demonic nightmare fuel. Gotta look at the dimensions when you buy things. So he's like three inches tall. Like the house and all these decorations. Oh, it's a real skeleton. The eyeball. <laughs> They've somehow created a full moon. It doesn't have those green lights around her. 